Uy, capó, güey. Uy, capó, güey. ¿Ready to go? No. Pues que Goodbye, buddy. Goodbye. Bye, old man. All right, peace out. So we have made it back to Las Vegas, and I know what you guys are thinking. Ryan, why are you back in Las Vegas again? And the answer to that is because the flights out of here are always super cheap. So if I can, if I'm nearby, I always like to drive to this airport to take a flight because they're cheaper. So instead of flying out of San Diego for $300, I spend $80 in gas, drive here, and then fly out of here for $120. So that is why we are back in lovely Las Vegas. But don't worry, it's not gonna be more of the same old videos in and around Las Vegas because another reason why I came here is I have to pick up a package, but tomorrow we're gonna be driving like six or seven hours out of Las Vegas, back into California, hopefully up the coast. And I wanted to leave and make that long drive tonight, but I have a package waiting for me in Las Vegas and the post office closes in 20 minutes so I will not make it there in time. So I have to wait till tomorrow morning, get my package, and then we can leave. Going. Yep. Well, there she is in all her glory. Looks like some of the window shades have fallen over, though. Also, my thumb has mostly healed since I've been gone for so long, which is good. So now I can use it. Beautiful. Woo, it's hot in here. All right, so before I do anything else, because it is probably 98 degrees in the back of the van, I'm gonna get changed out of these warm clothes and these sweatpants. Oh my gosh, it's higher than 98. It is currently 100 degrees in the back of the van. So I'm gonna get changed out of all these warm clothes into something a little bit more suited for the temperature. And then I'm gonna go find a campsite in the area tonight. All right, so there we go. A little bit more comfortable. Got some shorts and a t-shirt on. And for those of you who didn't watch my last video, or maybe this is your first video here and uh, you're new to my channel, I live in the back of my van full time. I've done so for the last two years. I post three videos a week, kind of vlogging what daily life is like living in the back of the van. We are currently in Las Vegas, as I'm sure you could tell by the start of this video. And the reason that we are in this airport parking lot is because this weekend I flew home for Easter to see my girlfriend, see my family. Um, I haven't been home in like a month, so I figured it'd be good to go home and hang out with them for the weekends. Well, I was on the plane, I was kind of debating, because we're getting back here semi kind of late. It's like seven o'clock. Whether or not I wanted to just kind of eat the $12 and just kind of staying here in the airport parking lot another night or leaving and finding a free stealth camping spot somewhere nearby in Vegas. And initially I was leaning towards just staying in the airport parking lot because especially after a long day of flying. Most of the time I don't really feel like driving, but then I kind of remembered that since I flew home for the weekend, I basically emptied out my fridge before I left. I don't really have much left, so there's nothing really in here for dinner and I'm kind of hungry, but I didn't really want to eat airport food again for dinner because I already had it for breakfast. Food in the airport's like 10 times as expensive as uh, regular food outside of the airport is, so I'm gonna drive somewhere, grab myself a quick bite to eat, and then find myself a stealth camping spot and I might, it's so hot in here just head back to one of those casinos that I've camped out in the city before because I'm familiar with it and it's easy. But for now, let's go get some food. Oh, that breeze feels so good. All right, let's see what the grand total is. $72, sheesh. Just kidding, that's actually not that bad. We're free. Wahoo. Nice. 
night for dinner. I think I'm just gonna get some good old fashioned chipotle. So hot tonight, I think I might have to break out the uh, AC unit that's been buried under there all winter. Depends on uh, how hot it is once I get to our campsite at the casino tonight. That was the slowest Chipotle I've ever been to. It took me like 45 minutes just to get this burrito, so that's nice. I think for tonight, I'm gonna drive over to the M Life Casino, which is a casino I've stayed at before, and that is probably where we're gonna call home for the night because I truly just don't feel like driving any further after flying all day for five hours. So check in with you guys once you get there. All right. So we've finally made it here to the casino parking lot after I made one singular wrong turn that somehow added an extra 20 minutes to the trip. So 45 minutes for the Chipotle, 20 minutes for the trip, a 10 minute drive turned into almost over an hour. So that's fun. Also, since the uh, drive took so long, I ended up eating almost all of the food on the way here. So I'm gonna get these curtains closed because there was a security guard driving around and although technically they're allowed to park in casino parking lots overnight i'm sure they don't really uh want people sleeping in their vehicles so don't want to make it obvious if i can help it but anyways now that i've made it back to the van got my dinner got my campsite for the night i'm probably just gonna finish this burrito and then go to bed because i am so tired and honestly even though it says that it's 93 degrees back here it really doesn't feel like it that much i mean it definitely feels hot but since it's like five percent humidity it's not really like sticky hot so it's not really that bad it's not like being near the beach or how florida was when it was super hot because it's not as humid but once i get these fans on it shouldn't be too bad and it's supposed to cool down a lot tonight so i'm just gonna finish this burrito and go to bed so i will see you guys in the morning good morning so i've been up for the last about hour and a half it is currently 11 30. we are still in the M Resort and Casino parking lot. And I had to wake up early this morning to take Zoom meetings, so I've been sitting here all morning uh, on my computer doing that. But I've got all of those finished up and it's starting to get hot back here, even though it is kind of cloudy out, so we're not really in direct sunlight, so it's not too bad. It is still 85 degrees in the back of the van, so not the most pleasant. And that's the thing that kind of sucks about the weather getting warmer is I can't sleep in as late because it starts getting hotter super early in the morning, especially when I'm in places like this in Las Vegas. So first things first, before we do anything else, I'm going to head over to that FedEx office and pick up the package that I had shipped here because it's been sitting there for two weeks and I was supposed to pick it up and I don't know how much longer they're gonna hold it. So I'm gonna head over there and pick that up real quick. All right, so I ran back and got myself changed into a different shirt because I've been wearing the same thing for two days. And I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit raspy. I woke up not feeling the best this morning. So we're dealing with that too. But this is something that I get questions about a lot is how do I get packages while living in a van? And there's a couple ways that I can do it. But basically the way that I normally do it is whether it's from Amazon or some mom and pop shop or any other company that's shipping me something. First thing I got to figure out is which carrier they use. And with Amazon, it's pretty simple. It's just Amazon and I can get it sent to Amazon locker boxes. But if it's FedEx or UPS or USPS, I have to figure out which service that the company that's sending me the product uses. And then I have to go online and look up areas near the location where I want it to be shipped and see which ones offer general delivery, which is essentially getting it delivered to an office location, uh, like a FedEx or UPS or a USPS store. Um, and instead of putting an address, you put the store's address and then your name and then put general delivery and they'll hold it there usually for a specific amount of days and then you can go pick it up. And for today's package, I used FedEx. So I'm heading over there. And we're going to pick that up before we figure out where we're going for the rest of the day. All right, so the FedEx store should be right up here on the left. So I'm just going to park right down here. Walk over there. No problem at all. Um, I have a general delivery for pickup. Okay. Uh, for a package, let me get you right down. Okay. All right, so I guess because I was four or five days late, they decided to take the package and ship it back to the sender. So I actually don't have a package there waiting for me, but when I was in there, I was asking if they do like a pack and ship service. So since I figured out who I'm going to be sending this snowboard to, I'm just gonna take this in there, drop it off with them, and get this shipped out so I can get it out of my van and save the space. So at least it wasn't a total waste of time stopping by here to do that. Let's go get this sent out real quick. 
Thank you. All right. So we've got the snowboard shipped, but unfortunately no package and that's just something else you gotta deal with. When you're getting stuff shipped to you is, uh, if you don't time it out perfectly and get the item shipped to where you're going the day that you're gonna be there, sometimes they won't hold it for so long or the package gets lost and it just gets annoying. So getting stuff shipped to you while living in the van is not the easiest thing in the world to do. But before we embark on this long drive that I have planned for today, I'm gonna whip myself up a little breakfast. And today we're going with the uh, Ryan Toomey Classic just a little breakfast sandwich. There is gonna be one special thing that I'm including in this breakfast sandwich that I haven't before, and that would be this. Spice blend right here. And I picked this up when I went home. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know what that is. What this is, is a seasoning blend specifically designed for breakfast and eggs or bagels, or anything you'd want to eat in the morning. And the reason that this is so cool is because it's designed by me and my friend who's a Michelin star chef, and it's something that I'm gonna be coming out with here in the next few months. And I got to try it out when I went home for the first time, and it was actually so good. It still needs a little bit of work and a little bit of tweaking, but I think we're getting close to the uh, final product here. So far, I've tried it on breakfast sandwiches, plain eggs, and a bagel. The best way that I can describe it is it's kind of like a finishing topping, like a everything but the bagel seasoning or a furikake. So essentially, you just use this as kind of a topping for whatever breakfast you're making. Throw it on there, it's got some salt in there, dried seaweed, some green chili flakes. And the reason I wanted to make this is one, because I love cooking, and two, because breakfast is my favorite meal of all time. I have never seen a seasoning specifically meant for eggs or breakfast, and maybe there's one out there that probably is, but there we go. That is what the seasoning blend looks like on top of my egg sandwich. And if you don't like eggs, it goes really, really well on top of a bagel, and there you go. That's what I call a breakfast sandwich. And the seasoning isn't finished yet. It's not really quite finalized, and I gotta get the packaging and all that stuff figured out. But for now, if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, you can go to the link in my description, ryan the number 2 mecom It'll be listed below, and then you can click on the coming soon section and enter your email to be notified when it comes out so you can be one of the first people to get your hands on this breakfast seasoning blend. Cheers. And I cannot wait for you guys to try it. All right, so I've got the breakfast mess all cleaned up. Van is ready to drive. And I have got a long drive ahead of me, just about seven hours to get myself back on track to where I was before I flew home. And ideally I wanna to get to the spot that I'm trying to camp tonight before the sun sets. But I'm really not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that, especially with having to get gas and driving this far. You never really get there when your GPS says you're gonna get there. So right now it says we're gonna get there at 6.52. We'll see how accurate that is when I actually get there. Mm, so good. Okay, so we have made it to the coast after a lovely seven, there goes my toilet, after a lovely seven hour drive. And I kind of wanted to get out of the heat and it's not as bad down here as it was in Vegas. It's definitely not 80 degrees, but right now I'm driving up to the top of this coastal mountain, just off of Route 1 in California. And hopefully we can find a spot up there where we can pull off and camp for the night uh, with a nice view of hopefully the ocean, but if not, some mountain ranges. This road truly just keeps getting sketchier and sketchier the further that I drive up it. Yeah, like this is crazy. Half the road is gone. All the rain this winter really wreaked havoc on these roads. It's like halfway falling apart. All right. All right, I think we're getting up here near the top of the mountain. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, so I think this is gonna be our spot right up here next to this van. We'll pull over in there real quick. And this is gonna be where we 
camp for the night. I'm sure there would be a spectacular view of the ocean through there. You can kind of see the mountain off in the distance if it wasn't so cloudy. But yeah, this is gonna be our spot tonight. And I'm definitely gonna get the uh, van turned off here because she's been going strong for a while. Give her a break. Seven hours later, we have finally made it here. So we're just kind of on this pull out on the side of this road, all the way at the top of this mountain. And it's actually pretty cold up here, but it looks like there's another section of road that has completely collapsed down on itself up here. So I'm gonna go check that out. So it looks like this section right here is another one of those that kind of fell apart. I'm not gonna get too close to it, but I just wanna show you guys the results of all this rain that California has been getting just destroying this road. Some of them, it was almost halfway in the road. If not even more, I had to pull off on the uh, side of the road in order to stay on. So definitely not the uh, most safe I've ever felt driving up a mountain, but we made it up here and it is so beautiful. Even the sunset behind the clouds, so peaceful. And it's actually pretty cold out, not gonna lie. I guess that'll give you some perspective for how high up we are. We're pretty much all the way at the top of these mountains. I wish it wasn't cloudy so I could take you guys and show you the view over the cliff over here, but yeah. I think right down there, you would be able to see the ocean if it wasn't so cloudy. But I think the clouds even make it a little bit more beautiful. Feels like you're in a dreamscape almost. I'm really glad I was able to make it up here before the sunset so we could actually take in that view. So that's nice, but I'm definitely gonna get myself a uh, hoodie on. And we're at a pretty steep incline here, which is annoying because Maybe if we had gotten here earlier, we would have been able to take that spot up there, which looks like it's a little bit more level than the spot we're currently in. I might pull down a little bit further because it looks like it might level out there a little bit, but for now, this is good enough. All right, so I've got my hoodie on and the sun is very quickly setting out there. And I don't know if you guys can hear those birds, but it is super peaceful up here there are some people that pulled up right in front of me that are just kind of hanging out in the back of their trucks drinking beer so it does kind of ruin the peacefulness of it a little bit but that's just one of the things that uh can happen when you pull up to these free ish spots where you can camp is they're also free to everybody else and very rarely do you get them alone it has been a long two days of travel five to six hours yesterday six hours today so i don't think i'm gonna be cooking myself any kind of big dinner tonight and i'm just going to settle for the new ultimate pepperoni di giorno that I picked up from a gas station on the way here. But first things first, I'm gonna get this oven preheated and then we're gonna get that popped in there for dinner. All right, so I got the oven preheating and I opened this cabinet to go uh, grab something and my daily multivitamins fell out and they have melted together from the heat in Las Vegas and are just one solid multivitamin gummy in there. So I guess I'm gonna have to get new ones of those. But you got the oven preheating. Now we're just waiting to put that in. <clears throat> also i'm sure you guys can't tell that well on video but there is actually a pretty severe slant like maybe you can tell a little bit better if i put the camera down but this is me standing vertically and this is kind of like this is kind of like the angle the van is at and this is me standing vertically and i think it might just be a little bit too much for me to try to sleep here tonight so whenever those people in front of me leave i might try to move up there and try to find a more level spot on this little pull out but look at this sunset I mean that is spectacular all right so while I was sitting here waiting for the pizza to reheat the uh, clouds kind of dissipated so you can kind of get a better view of where we are so you can see the mountains down there and kind of see the city lights past that and then past all that is the ocean down there so pretty spectacular sight it should be good to wake up to in the morning it shouldn't be cloudy then so We'll get a better view of that in the morning. All right, so I think the oven is preheated enough and I didn't keep this in the freezer while I drove here, so it's kind of thawing out a little bit. So I'm gonna get that in there real quick and hopefully it doesn't fall apart. I'll just keep an eye on it and make sure that we don't mess up my oven the first night back. I also got mozzarella all over the floor, so now I gotta clean that up. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. I think the pizza is just about done. I moved it up on the rack. It's kind of dripping down and creating some smoke, but looks good. Looks like it's done. And the people that were out in front of me have, it's completely dark out so you can't really see, but they have left. So I'm gonna get this pizza pulled out of the oven and then try to pull the van forward a little bit and hopefully find some sort of a 
flatter spot. Right. I almost just dropped the whole pizza. I think that should be sturdy enough up there to stay still while I pull the van forward real quick. And I hope these people up here don't mind me getting a little bit closer to them. All right, so pulled forward about 15 feet. Feels a little bit flatter here, I feel like. This is pretty much as good as it's gonna get. So I think this is where we're gonna call home for the night. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better. So this will have to do. Maybe if those people in that other RV move tomorrow, we'll pull up and we'll take their spot. But I think for now, I'm just gonna eat this pizza and then get some work done and go to bed. So I will leave you guys with a nighttime montage and I will check in with you in the morning. this morning feeling significantly more sick than I did yesterday. My nose is clogged, I got a scratchy throat, and I really just don't feel good. And not feeling good especially sucks when you live in a van because it just kind of gets amplified. Because there are some days where you can't just sit down and relax, especially when you're alone. Last night after I got in bed, there were like four or five separate cars that pulled in right behind me to stay for the night. One even pulled in way in the back back there and had a tent set up that they slept in. I guess this is a um, pretty popular spot for people to come and uh, stay the night when they're in the area. But now we can check out that view and hopefully we're able to see it if it's not too cloudy out. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm gonna take you guys outside real quick and show you that. But first, I'm gonna put a hoodie on because it's kind of cold out. that so you can kind of see what I was talking about last night the oceans down there I could see these city lights last night at some points when the clouds kind of broke up but there's also someone on a bear glider up there and that looks like something that would be super fun fly around in the mountains on one of those things but yeah definitely not a bad spot to wake up despite being sick still is pretty nice out here I wonder how hard it is to get into flying one of those things maybe one day I'll try it oh I do not feel <coughs> good though but I do think that I'm gonna head back into town today. Because staying up here in the mountains with no food, feeling sick like I do, <coughs> just doesn't sound like the most fun thing. And I actually got a question in my Discord the other day um, about what do I do when I am sick in the van and I need some help. And the honest answer is I just kind of tough it out. Kind of in the same way that somebody living alone would tough it out, I have to do the same thing just with a couple extra things I gotta do. Like planning where I'm gonna sleep, driving to that location, making sure that I have enough water, my toilet's empty, so it's definitely a little bit tougher with being sick and living in a van, but it is doable. So while I was back home, I got this uh, glass strip coffee filter sent to me by a company called Pure Over, and it actually makes pretty good coffee, but I'm just now realizing I don't have any coffee grinds. I only have these little pods. So we're just having K-Cup coffee. You can almost tell how much the van is on a slant by the way that the coffee is falling into the mug. It's like <laughs> coming down at an angle because the van is so tilted. And that's also another reason why I don't really want to stay here again because as you guys can see, that camper van is still in front of me so I can't pull into that flatter spot and that's pretty much the only flat spot that's up here. Um, and actually I think fun fact about that RV, that's the uh, brand new all electric van life Winnebago. So that van is 100% electric, no gas or diesel, and they actually reached out to me a, two or three weeks ago uh, asking if I wanted to take one of those things out and try it for a few days and film some videos, and I think that'd be really cool. So I told them, yeah, but I haven't heard back. So hopefully within the next couple of months, I'll be able to take one of those things out. I think they only have prototypes right now. I don't even think it's a full production vehicle yet, but I'm not really sure. Either way, I think it'd be cool to take it out. Nice hot cup of joe and beautiful views. I think uh, since I'm not feeling the hottest this morning, I'm probably just going to cook myself some breakfast and use that new egg spice, which you guys should definitely go check out. It'll be in the link in the description. And then I'm probably just going to head out of here, drive all the way back down the mountain, back into town, and get myself some medicine and maybe some cough drops or something like that. I think that's it for this video, so 
as always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. I'm going to make myself some breakfast, so I will catch you guys next time.